So Tobias Zulov is a Joomla 3.10 release lead and Joomla security assistant lead, uh, team lead. And he's also involved in the German translation team. Today's presentation is covering how to set HTTP headers using the core HTTP header plugin. Um, it will be starting with Joomla 4.0, the core ship with an HTTP heading plugin. And this session extends to explain the features implemented there and also shows what's possible with the back port to Joomla 3.10 already. I am going to share my screen real quick and show you our wonderful sponsors today with our premium premier sponsor of Watchful, our platinum sponsors, Commerce Lab, Open Source Joomla, OS Training, Rockin, our gold sponsors, Cloud Access, J Module, RS Joomla, Web 357, Weebler, and our silver sponsor sponsors are Danico, Joomla Connections, Joomla Shack, L Theme, Mastermind Joomla. Rytech Sites, Simplify Your Web, and Web Design by Robin. We would not be able to have this event without your generous sponsorship. Stop share. Um, reminder, lunchtime today at 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, we will be joining a session called Networking, and it's really fun. So just imagine you're um, sitting at lunch, talking to different people, but we're gonna do it virtually. Tonight on kumospace.com slash jdayusa. Really fun games. We'll all chat about everything we learned today during the sessions and celebrate a wonderful uh, Joomla Day USA event. Um, you can chat with us in the chat box, but you can also ask questions in the Q&A. And um, we will remind you at the end um, to ask those questions so Tobias can answer them. And I think I've covered everything. So I am going to tag you, Tobias, spotlight for everyone. Perfect. You can get going. Great. Then uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I uh, have uh, something, I have an introduction session on my own too. <laughs> it's all, everything is in there, uh, what, what Robin already said. Uh, I'm based in Germany. Um, community uh, since 2011, um, and uh, it's actually my second Joomla Day USA presentation, given that last year I uh, could premiere with my 3 or 10 related topic. I think it's still online, um, so when you want to look, want to have a look, um, it's in there. Uh, another uh, intro uh, s uh, slide is this one, it's basically uh, how you can contact me. And will be in the end, and in the end, there will also be a QR code where you can download the the session things. And um, you know, from my understanding, it's also uh, being recorded. Yeah, it's it's recorded, and, and you can uh, see it there, see it there too. Okay. So, what's what are the topics of this talk? What we are going to through? Um, I will give a short explainer what HTTP response headers are, um, what are HTTP security headers. Um, we'll talk a bit about content security, give some examples, um, and show and explain the core tools that we have with uh, 4.0. Um, then we will briefly go into what's fetch metadata um, and we'll uh, tell how to use it. And um, given that some of the uh, stuff is part of the core already uh, with 4.0, I will also talk about uh, what I've backported to 3.10, given that the HTTP security headers thing is um, still there. Um, there will be a, a list of links, so um, it makes sense when you want to download um, uh, the, the topics. Um, and yeah, then there will be the, the questions thing. Okay, let's go into this. Um, what are HTTP response headers? HTTP response headers are basically something that uh, well, when, when you hit the website with your browser, you send a request headers, so something to tell the server what I want to see. I want to see the website that Tobias has created, or I want to see something else, uh, a subside of that. And 
that are the request headers. So the browser requests something from the server and the response headers, something that the server is sending to you and telling you additional, additional information. From this screen, you see the status uh, uh, information, 200 is uh, usually uh, showing, yeah, everything worked well. And um, uh, the uh, information uh, gone through and content type and everything I'm going to explain uh, in, in the now is is going to be a response header because it's set on the server side. So the server will tell the client how to handle this specific side. So um, uh, for example, make sure everything here is set with HTTPS or something or um, don't uh, uh, try to load something from external or something like along the lines. So it's basically something set on your server and sent as uh, within the initial HTTP response back to, to your clients, to the browser. So what do we have as, as, uh, as HTTP security headers? Um, there are a few and uh, some are set within uh, the Joomla plugin already, or you can set them directly with the HD access. Um, for example, strict transport security. Strict transport security makes sure that your site is only reachable with HTTPS. So while still your site may be uh, available on HTTP, strict transport security makes sure that the browser which support that header, but I think nowadays everyone is supporting that. We'll make sure um, no one can trick your uh, uh, trick people that access your site to use it um, without HTTPS. Uh, similar to XFrame options, uh, it basically tells uh, your um, tells tells the browser don't frame my site. So basically, uh, the login um, uh, the login page uh, is something that you don't want uh, to be framed. Um, into a different site um, to uh, so they can trick them with some fancy JavaScript into sh uh, sending the login for information um, to you or <laughs> to, to the attacker side and, and not to you anymore. Um, X content type options, uh, that's something that's um, uh, also set by Joomla nowadays to not let the browser try to figure out what um, a mind type uh, of a certain file has. For example, a PNG file shouldn't be interpreted uh, as a JavaScript file because um, some, yeah, something can be embedded there and executed on the client side that should not be happening. So uh, I think nowadays also Joomla um, has, his, has it in his uh, default uh, thing, uh, default uh, uh, HD access already uh, and set it to don't try to understand, tr try to trick everyone else into something. That's some kind of legacy behavior for a yeah, very old site. Then content security policy, it's basically a way to tell um, the browser, where is the resources that we are using on this site coming from, or what's allowed, what's not allowed, and all that stuff. There will be a dedicated uh, step about that. Referral policy is something when you click on link that's within your site, what does the remote site know about the people that I'm going to? So when I click, uh, I'm, I'm on my site, click the link um, to another site, um, what do they see coming from? When uh, there are different settings, um, uh, it's also configurable within Joomla, so you can say what, what setting do you want, and um, uh, uh, something along the lines, when, for example, my site is HTTPS and their site is HTTP, um, what's, uh, what's being showed there, and different uh, stuff. Um, then there's permission policy, and uh, formerly known as feature policy, um, that's uh, a thing where different um, features um, or uh, uh, features from the browser, for example, um, showing um, have, having access to, to um, audio or video or cameras or all sort of stuff can be configured and said, I don't want to use that. Um, and technically you are protecting someone against having a malicious JavaScript running that's um, on, on your side that's trying to, to invoke that. Cross-origin opener policy um, is also a header um, 
we are going into uh, that's going to be able you are going to be able to set in the, in the plugin now we are going into into the live session part um how do you know what's uh how, how do you know that you have set your stuff stuff correctly there's a site called securityheaders.com I think it was .o in the past. It should be .com, securityheaders.com, where you can enter your site and let it scan. So uh, in that scan, you'll see then is that header set and is that set header set to a secure um, to a secure value. Um, as you see, I've I've put in Joomla org slash four. We will use that. Uh, we we will see how 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 it had, has been done there uh, in a minute. Um, so basically, we set the XFrame options. And uh, then any access to the site that you can't frame it within another site. Uh, refer policy has been set, permission policy has been set. It's that uh, anti flock thing, when I remember correctly. Um, and content type options have been set as it's in the default of Joomla. Uh, strict transport security is set, so um, it's only available, available via HTTPS. And, uh, and the content security policy is set, that will be our example. Uh, within a few minutes. Um, now we are going into what's the default headers that Joomla will set when you install a fresh copy of it. And it's um, the things that are listed here. Um, it's you, you can reach uh, that plugin under uh, system extensions plugins within the Joomla backend of Joomla 4. Um, and what it said uh, uh, by default is XFrame options. External options um, to uh, Tobias. Only... Yes. Um, are you showing a screen, a slide? Because we still see your title. And you said you were listing something here. Uh, I am showing. Oh, why don't you see that? No, no, no. That, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to tell in the live session. Why don't you see? It's updating on my end, so you, you're still seeing the title, just yes. <laughs> just the title. Okay, then we try this one. Do you see now, now something else? Yes. Okay. Yes, I see it now. Okay, no problem. Then I will go back just just for reference. Um, that's that's the picture on the browser HTTP. Uh, around so basically the HTTP request and response and thank you this is this yeah this, this is the list I gone through for um, uh, the the headers and this is the page of security headers when you put in Joomla four slash four uh, Joomla org slash four so we are back here um, th this is the default header set by Joomla when you set it up uh, cleanly uh, refer policy strict origin when cross origin so when there is um, uh, a site running um, or when, when there's a link uh, and you hit the link, then uh, it will execute that thing. Cross opener cross origin opener policy will say it will stay by same origin. You have the option to force specific uh, HTTP security headers within the plus sign, but it's not enabled, of course, by default. Um, you also got options to strict transport security and content security policy. We're going into um, later. And uh, we'll, we will see in the live demo. Then we have uh, some default headers. Yeah, as, as I mentioned, the X content type options. Um, and uh, there's only one valid value, value, basically no sniff. So the browser don't tries to, um, tries to, uh, yeah, um, guess, tr don't tries to guess uh, the content type. Um, and uh, in that sense could be tricked into doing something that uh, he shouldn't do. And we also have, but it's commented out by default because some people thought it would could, could harm uh, some sites, um, some uh, proposals for the cross origin resource policy. So basically making sure that your images you stall on your site and um, uh, your uh, videos or whatever is in your images folder, for example, uh, cannot be loaded by external sites. So for example, my site is um, uh, um, um, dot, dot com or whatever. And um, 
evil uh, .dev cannot load the JavaScript that's hosted on my site. Um, so I can make sure it's not uh, loaded there. And the concern, concern was that um, the th there could be valid reasons that I have hosted the image on one page um, and want to use it on different uh, on a different page. So we kind of agreed to just have it there, put it, uh, um, have it there, uh, educate our people. It's in the default HD access, um, but not enable it by default. Um, so yeah, and also have some more additional additional links uh, to the uh, explainer what this two um, what these two headers are are about to do. Then the next part is content security policy. Um, I've taken. The first sentence out of um, the CSP with Google Corporate.com site um, to, to explain what, what it does in a more technical term. So the primary benefit of CSP is preventing the exploiting of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. When an application uses strict policy and attacker who finds an XSS bug will no longer be able to force the browser to execute malicious scripts on the page. So um, the strict policy is the thing we're going into uh, right now. Um, and then attacker will find some XSS bug. XSS is basically, uh, in, in the most cases, something uh, where a site visitor can enter something and trick Joomla or other web uh, applications um, into executing uh, JavaScript because um, not everything is, is perfect and there, there are uh, some uh, very small cases where, uh, so, for example, text filtering doesn't work or can be tricked in somehow. And in the case you uh, allow public people to execute, uh, to, to, to enter content, um, they could um, enter that kind of magic or kind of um, uh, additional text um, to, to trick the browser about that. Uh, but with CSP, you clearly define um, what pages or where you expect to um, be uh, information and JavaScript is loaded from. And, uh, and other resources like images and all the all our stuff. Um, and it uh, limits the use of JavaScript. So it makes sure or can make sure um, that uh, you are not allowed to call, for example, eval or inline JavaScript, um, inline CSS um, or uh, CSS in general, where my style sheets are coming from. And, um, uh, protects against site loading, protect uh, users against malicious browser plugins. Um, I've enabled um, or I've set up um, a CSP within the Joomla org uh, side of networks, uh, no, network of sites, so to speak. And um, I've enabled the reporting me me mechanism to see where did our uh, security policy hit and um, maybe it could be uh, not intended that it hit. And I've got so many reports of uh, security browser extensions or uh, even malicious browser extensions uh, that are even that specific that I know this specific client was hit by this or that um, infection, mostly on uh, macOS. I was surprised not to see um, many um, Windows related um, stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, protect your users against malicious browser plugins that includes uh, such browser plugins as, um, uh, yeah, how, how is it called? Some kind of, when, when you hit, when you prepare a link uh, and it is a affiliate link and uh, some browser plugins tend uh, to do it in, in the background. So you prepare, a, um, uh, you, you, you have a, a, a um, you have a plugin for that? Uh, you, no, you don't have a plugin for that. You have um, a link in there and they hit, they use your link, but in the process of going to the site, for example, Amazon or something like along the lines of that, um, the, the, the information is changed because that browser plugins can interfere within the connection. And um, when you don't let them access your site um, and limits the use of JavaScript and say, no, no external JavaScript is allowed, uh, then you can uh, protect your site against that. Um, 
as uh, as an example. Um, and now I'm going to show you why I've included CSS in there, because even third party CSS is not safe. You could argue, yeah, JavaScript is more dangerous. I fully agree. But this six lines basically um, could show or could um, uh, internal uh, in, into external uh, CSS uh, could show uh, or, or tell your users your site is down. While it isn't, it's still working background in the background totally perfectly. But as you load it external uh, CSS and this uh, six lines are in there, or you could shorten that even, um, it, it shows you um, that uh, the site is down. So it makes sense also to protect against CSS not loading from untrusted sources. So there might be sources, uh, Google fonts or whatever, when you wanna use that, um, that you trust in, but there are also uh, places where you might don't trust um, and uh, want to limit the use of uh, CSS from such sources uh, too. So how, how it's going to use, uh, how, how to use content security policy. Uh, basically uh, there are different di di directives so like script source, image source, style source, lots of uh, um, directives you can uh, specific, specific, no, you can uh, uh, set. And there is a low list of origins. So basically um, I allow uh, 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 images to be loaded from uh, my own site. That uh, um, makes sense. Um, but I also uh, allow it to be loaded from someone else's site but no one else. So uh, for example, from a CDN or something where I know I have edited to the side, but I don't allow it from other sites. Um, like to go with the uh, CSS example, you could also say, okay, I only want to um, load uh, from Google fonts. Uh, that's also going to be included in the, um, in the, in the example. That's, that's why I'm using the, so you say, okay, I want to load the fonts and the styles from Google fonts, but nothing else, uh, because I know my fonts are only coming from there. And when there are other sources of Google fonts um, or other forces or sources of fonts or scripts or whatever, it's someone doing something that I don't intend. Um, there are also reasons, there could also be reasons, um, primarily uh, legacy reasons that JavaScript or CSS is handled in line within um, within the uh, within the site um, that would make uh, that that uh, yeah that, that you have to whitelist and there are two ways to approach this one is called nonce and number used once and hashes so when you have a fixed um, example of things that's not going to change and you know it has to just has to be there you can either create a hash i will show it how, how to do it um, basically the browser tells you the correct hash you have to enter uh, in the debug mode or in the how, how i set up set it up mode uh, or you can uh, as long as it's going through joomla's um, uh, script and uh, style api um, uh, Joomla can also set the nonce. Uh, so the number used once is generated by the plugin we're going to see, and um, uh, it's injected into the, the document and at the place, at the point where the, um, where the tag is rendered, the nonce is rendered there too, and it's uh, repeating every, um, it's, it's new for every user. Same goes for the hashes. And um, that's generated and at the point where the he headers are set, that can be set into headers. And then the browser on the other end can compare, okay, is the nonce there that's in the, um, that's in the site? Is that matching to the uh, JavaScript that I see? And, um, or is the hash matching to uh, the script or the JavaScript or the uh, CSS that I see, then I will execute it, else I will don't execute it. Um, uh, in the statement of Google above, um, it also mentions strictness. Um, you can go still with content security policy and say, yeah, I'm allowing inline script. You basically, most of this protection that comes with content security policy is protecting you about against inline scripts. That's one of or inline styles and inline scripts. Um, and 
you can still say, yeah, I still have to enable it for this or that side because it's legacy side. That's um, also a point. Um, and so, so that's with the different strictness um, thing. So for example, when you don't have an unsafe uh, inline or unsafe eval to allow, still allow eval uh, execution of JavaScript, um, uh, when you don't have that in there, then most of the uh, content, uh, the uh, XSS protection uh, is, is enabled uh, for that side. Um, when you set up a site um, or want to set up content security policy, um, there's also something called um, a reporter. So um, when you put into the directive a report URI, as a URI, um, and put in a, a CSP reporter, I posted uh, just when you look later into it, um, to, to versions, how you uh, can, can do that, set up on the site, put it within the plugin folder if you wish, and um, or somewhere else on your site, something reachable from the outside, uh, put it in there, put it in, put the URL to that CSP reporter in the site, and then it will generate you um, a report uh, about, yeah, on this specific subside of your website, um, I got a violation of your CSP rule. Um, and uh, I try, uh, please check wherever that's okay. At, um, after a few months or weeks, depending on how frequent your site is accessed, we can disable that because as mentioned before, you will get a few bonkers reports or at least, yeah, I've uh, uh, bon bonkers reports in, in the sense of um, that it's not, something for you to fix, but something where the security policy has hit correctly and blocked that access. Um, I have some very low profile sites where I have still enabled the CSP reporter just to see what's going on. And uh, for example, when people are opening my website um, from uh, some of the popular social media networks, I still see, yeah, uh, that even when it's within the app, um, they still try to collect uh, where the guy has clicked to and all that stuff um, has been blocked by my CSP because I don't list uh, uh, the popular CMS, uh, the popular um, uh, uh, social, social networks within um, my CSP header. So they, they trying to execute scripts on my site that I've set up that I've never implemented any social media stuff. They still try to execute stuff within the user's browser that's trying to access my site. So that's the way to, to understand and see that. On larger sites like Junta.org, we have, after the test run, have quickly um, disabled <laughs> that CCP reporter because there are so many reports. Um, okay, now all the, 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 the technical details. Um, Let's see in a practical example. What you see right now is the HTTP header set for um, the HTTP header set for content security policy for Joomla org slash four. Basic, a very basic thing. And um, as you can see, there are um, a few uh, directives set. For example, default source. So every directive, like what we have here, uh, script source, for example, or uh, connect source, or there are a few, <laughs> uh, no, no hundreds, but uh, a large list of directives. So default source, make sure everything that you haven't explicitly set uh, will fall back to the default source. Makes sense. Um, default to self. Self here means coming from my own site. So in this case, journal.org slash four. Everything that's in there, um, like, for example, scripts um, that are stored on my hosting account still can uh, be loaded. So for example, all the scripts that Joomla um, uh, uses and provides um, to, to run properly and all the extensions and all that stuff, everything that's coming from um, that's coming from a JavaScript file stored on your, on your page um, will, will uh, perfectly work. Um, then we have style source. There's also um, the self directive because uh, the self option, because we want to load um, the stuff that's coming uh, from, from our site. One second. 
Um, we want to allow uh, style sheets that are hosted on our own uh, website to be loaded, even again, to, the, uh, to let the things happening that uh, we're using. Then you see a, um, a hash sum. Um, that's in this specific case, we'll go into that in a minute, uh, we'll, we'll show it to you, uh, will be, um, is, is a configuration within the template um, uh, that uh, is stored as inline JavaScript, but it's using the Joomla API, so I could even set it with uh, nonsense. Um, and then we have the example of Google, uh, Google Fonts uh, on the font source and the style source, where fonts.googleapis.com is the page where the styles are hosted on Google Fonts, and font is uh, the font directly is stored on fonts.gstackery.com. Um, Joomla itself also provides some fonts, so again, we have to use self and self also for image source because some images uh, on the Joomla org slash four site um, is uh, coming from, from its own uh, uh, Joomla site, but also I think it's the Rochen uh, uh, label that's uh, just um, the, the, the Rochen image that's coming from below the site um, that's used on all um, the Joomla.org sites, it's coming from CDN, the Joomla.org. So uh, we will make sure that this is allowed to. So that's the run through um, the, the header that we have set on, um, on Joomla.org slash four. Uh, now I will go to the live demo, basically the HTTP header security plugin, uh, system HTTP headers plugin. Um, that's the plugin we are showing right now, or we'll, we'll be showing in a minute. And initially, uh, before the 4.0 was released, there was a component plan too, uh, basically to allow you to collect um, uh, the reports similar to what the uh, report query was uh, be able to. Um, but uh, I think a few weeks or half a month or something along the lines of the decision was made to uh, remove that component um, from the final release of four, um, but still all the relevant um, headers can be set within, uh, within Joomla, just not the reports being collected. Okay, then we switch to live presentation. Hopefully you can see now live presentation can you confirm yes we can that? see it great so let's see whether I've, I've been logged out hopefully not i'm still looking great um so this is this is the plugin uh i can show uh how to find it so home dashboard then system plugins and then you can filter by HTTP or just look for the system HTTP address plugin. Um, there you have all the configuration options that I've showed you before. That's default stuff. Um, false HTTP headers allows you when you already have a, a set uh, content security policy where you have the complete string already available, you can also set it here. Um, but uh, that tab uh, has a bit more uh, options available. Uh, you can also set um, expect CT, that's a special thing, permissions policy or a report to and um, other headers that we haven't set up a, a specific tooling yet within, uh, or you, when you have a specific need to set something, maybe that's not provided um, by, by the core tools yet. So we can remove that. Well, you can set multiple uh, things and that will always override what you've set here within the uh, other two tabs. Second tab is strict transport security, um, basically an option to enable it, set the max age value um, that uh, defines the seconds um, where the default option and also the default that's provided is one year. So one year the browser will, will remember your site to be only loaded with HTTP access, uh, with um, HTTPS. Also for subdomains, so for example, when um, uh, we have enrolled that thing on Joomla.org, every subdomain with, with that options enabled, with that option enabled, every subdomain uh, will only be loaded with HTTPS. So um, uh, that's to make sure that um, uh, on initial 
on the initial call to Joomla Dog, they could have theoretically be um, trapped into HTTP, but on the second call, um, they will be redirected to HTTPS in the latest. Um, the preload setting, that's something we haven't enabled yet, um, is uh, to tell the browser, please store that information uh, um, and provide that driver sites that even the initial call will only be HTTPS. Um, yeah, and some uh, more explained uh, stuff is in here too. Um, that's something we haven't done yet, um, but uh, you can able, uh, it, but it is provided within um, within the plugin. Um, also, this both uh, tabs are something you have to specifically uh, enable. I've enabled it yet. Um, I've enabled them uh, yet, but uh, yeah, you can also go and just say disable, and this is the uh, default status uh, because not every site, while it should be, <laughs> not every site, at specifically localhost site, don't have um, HTTPS yet. And then we go to the tab content security policy. Um, there you have the, the general switch to enable it and um, make sure it's uh, the, the thing um, the HTTP uh, CSP will, will be set on the side or administrator or both. So by default, it's just side because that's easier to, to set up. And I think in most cases, that's the, the place where non-trusted people are going to, but you're still uh, uh, being allowed to just set it for the administrator when there is the reason for, or say, okay, the, the things I'm going to set up uh, below is enabled on both. Um, for every directive, you can also say that this, is, this is just for the site, this is just for administrator, or this is for both. So you have full flexibility here um, and can configure it uh, as you wish. Uh, the first option, report only, uh, allows you um, to set it into a report only mode. Um, and this way it is enforced in the browser and all the browser will tell you there is an issue. And also the report or you will tell you there's an issue, but it is not executed. So um, it, it will go through all the checks and say, yeah, there, is is there are issues, but I still proceed. So in the case you're trying to roll it out, it makes sense to set a true report only that um, there are no issues within your site at that point. And um, yeah, um, uh, you know, but that's at the point where I say, okay, I'm, I'm not certain that this is the correct rule. You can disable that. And at that point, every violation would result into that specific thing to be blocked. Then we have nonce, script hashes and style hashes. That are things that um, I've mentioned earlier when enabled that hashes are will at that nonce will generate it and be added to the, your um, HTTP header. Um, or the script hashes will be generated. Right now we know there are no script hashes so that for that reason we have disabled it, but when you need it, you can enable it. Strict dynamic is a specific settings for the script hashes that makes sure everything that you have allowed specifically will be allowed to load more too. So for example, um, uh, there is a, a Google uh, servers or an external servers, a CDN servers, um, where you load your JavaScript from whatever JavaScript you need. Um, but this JavaScript is loading more um, and that can change um, for, for some reason. Then you can say strict dynamic and that makes sure that everything that's uh, within uh, this, uh, uh, everything that's allowed is also allowed to load uh, more. Um, so yeah, here, as, as mentioned, uh, when it's set with an answer on hash. Um, uh, okay. So bias. Then, yeah. We have a five minute um, worth of questions. Do you want to use that before the session's over? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm already over that. Okay. Then uh, some, okay. I, I've talked too much. I've talked too much. Um, do, do we have questions? Then I have to ask, answer them. Else, I can go. I can uh, quickly go through the other steps that uh, I've in my, have in my presentation. We got. We do have a question that just came in yeah. from Ed. How is enabling this plugin different from uh, just forcing the HTTPS onto the entire site in the global configuration? Uh, as before that question, um, was this plugin 
um, something new for 310 and 40, or is this something that's always been part of uh, the Joomla installs? That's that's something new um, for okay. Joomla 4.0, shipped with, with, with the core. But uh, when you look up uh, into the uh, Joomla extension directory, there's a plugin called HTTP header developed by me um, that's backporting everything you just uh, saw um, from uh, 4 uh, back to 3.10. Uh, actually, gotcha. that plugin was there before, but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, backporting stuff. Um, for the other question, uh, can you repeat that, please? Yes, how is this plugin different than what we had in global configuration where we forced HTTPS to the entire site? Um, forcing HTTPS to the other site is just a Joomla thing. And um, it only, uh, for yeah, technically it's working uh, similar, but for example, when you are loading images or you are loading non Non stuff that's not directly generated by Joomla, then for example, that would not kick in, but strict principle oh. security would kick in uh, because um, uh, it's set once for your session. So for example, the browser opens, loads Joomla the dog, knows, okay, Joomla the dog will be loaded with HTTPS only. And um, then all subsequent calls to uh, Joomla the dog um, will be sent into HTTPS. Um, you can also use that to uh, forward on, on HTT, uh, HD access stuff, but um, uh, yeah, that, that's working too, but that's the uh, way where modern browsers uh, know it from. At both, but in the end, both work, but still it makes sure nothing can be sent or can be, can be loaded from HTTP, sorry. So this plugin, um, if you were using Joomla just out of the box, the way that the defaults are, um, do those cover you really well? The defaults are with strict transport security and content security policy disabled. So like okay. it is now, disabled and disabled and um, with them enabled because we know that's a sensible default. Um, but uh, when you want to enable that, uh, strict transport security or content security policy, which has to be set up for each site even individually anyway. Um, okay. uh, you can you can enable that strict transport security. I think even that value is default. Uh, the default value is yeah okay, and only the the switch for uh, also subdomains has to be enabled if you want to set it um, uh, for your site. Could also be uh, valid reasons to not set it up. Um, for the simple side, for, of course, because there are no subdomains, but when there are, could be subdomains that are not set up yet correctly with HTTPS, could make sense to disable mm -hmm. it for now, fix that and enable it for the site. So Richard has a question. Where can we yeah. find the proper syntax to use for HTTP rules and a list of possible entries? Because I want to make sure that I get it right. Yeah. Um, that, that's what, what I was about to, to get to. Um, mm -hmm. The directives, you don't need to know the specific syntax. So for example, uh, the directives uh, that when you add them, um, there's a list of directives that are available uh, to be set, uh, worker source, for example, and then we have special stuff like the self or uh, the unsafe inline stuff. Um, or you completely set the URL. It's just without the extensions, uh, uh, Roboto, whatever, just um, the origin where that's coming from, uh, including the HTTPS. So this also makes sure it's not being allowed to be loaded from HTTP fonts, Google st statics, um, uh, but you can also remove it. That would allow HTTPS and HTTP, depending on how your setup works. That's for the this stuff. Um, and for the strict transport security, you, uh, every uh, option has, the, um, has uh, such an external link uh, included here, also for content security policy, where you can look up more details on what's the content security policy, how is this going to work. I think we also did that for, yeah, for XFRAM and uh, referral policies. Basically, we are linking back to the Mozilla uh, documentation where you get more details um, 
technical details on the, on the headers. So Edward wanted to know, is it safe to both enable the plugin, the, this HTTP plugin, and force the HTTP on the entire site and global configurations? Yeah. Do they work well to be, together? Yeah, they, they, they work uh, well together. When the thing you should have in mind when you set the headers within the htaccess file, so even the, the third option available, um, and set the headers directly there, then just please go and disable the plugin because that's going to override the stuff that you're setting in the plugin and that's going to collide. Or when you said, okay, I'm going to set the content security policy or whatever policy in there, but not the other, just disable it in the plugin so it don't have two places where you configure that because it's uh, hell to, to understand where is that issue now coming from. So um, make sure you only have one place where you configure the uh, headers for the entire site or something that's the only the one thing is a Joomla thing the entire site stuff and in this case the strict transport security works well together um, but uh, yeah forever when you set security headers directly within the uh, HTG uh, access file then um, please make sure there's only one place where you want to set that well that's interesting yeah for people who just went never in, happened. Hit, never, never on. happened to me. They never, never happened to me. So I cannot tell from practice. Oh yeah. So, drink, <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah. I, I think before, previously, without this plugin, you would, if you were um, more hands-on, go into your HT access and, and make yep. changes there. Of course. That, that, so that's, this that's kind of replaces reason. that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the reason we built that plugin to also enable that. And also you don't need to know the syntax directly because um, it changes. It, yeah, it could theoretically change, change but um, uh, you just have to click enable and also include uh, subdomains, for example, and, and Joomla takes care of generating the correct header. Um, you have to understand what's happening, but you don't have to remember how you have to, to set code it, it up correctly. Correct. Okay, we are two minutes over. Tobias, okay. thank you so much for this yeah. very insightful um, webinar. And please remember to thank our sponsors if you come across them today. Jump in yeah. some more sessions. We have one more before our lunch break. And um, at the end of the day, join together at Kumo Space slash, slash JDay USA so we can all talk about all the great things we learned today. Yeah. I, I will include this page here. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, it's like starting from over again. So all the <laughs> stuff that I uh, missed uh, can, can be downloaded um, and the QR code is, is visible. And yeah, feel free to reach me out to me uh, within my community account, my clip account, GitHub or Twitter. And uh, I'm happy to, to help on any questions that we couldn't solve here. And there are also <laughs> some, some parts uh, that, that I haven't been able to, to cover within the talk that are in the slide deck. So feel free to ask me any questions when there are any. Thank you.